At this point, nothing you see in face cams for video calls or live streams is real. It's just not real. For the entire reading of this intro, I haven't even been looking at the camera. I've been looking at my preview in OBS Studio, and my eyes are looking at the camera. It's kind of creepy to watch, because it's almost like there's a desync, but it just keeps making my eyes look at the camera. It's kind of fascinating. Before we get started, I do just want to say that the reason that my eyes keep averting from the eye contact feature has to do with the angles that your camera and that your eyes are looking. There are limits to which your eyes can shift away from the camera's field of view as well as which direction, like how high your camera is from your head. So my traditional camera placement is on a tall monitor that's not exactly in the ergonomic position for a webcam that has it up a little too high. And that downward angle combined with a drastic shift in eye focus away from the camera kind of breaks it a little bit and it basically hard resets over and over. So it's not necessarily a bug so much as me just being out of the range of this particular camera during that use case, which in a way, is a limitation of its capabilities at the moment. But for standard one-on-one -on -one conversations where you're maybe just looking at the video preview rather than someone, like right now I'm looking at the OBS preview right below the camera rather than the camera itself. However, if I look off to the side over here, then it starts kind of losing that tracking and resetting a bit because I am now shifted too far away from the camera and it doesn't know what to do. And if I put my glasses back on, other than the glare, it's still doing just fine. If you start getting shadows or like too much magnification from your glasses, it's obviously going to have issues because it kind of distorts your eyes a little bit naturally, but like this, it's kind of creepy right now to look at a video preview and still be making eye contact with myself. Like this might be the first time I've ever had a conversation with myself eye to eye outside of a mirror, like a digital, like a video call conversation with myself. I don't know, but I just wanted to point that out because I talked to the NVIDIA reps, sent them my samples and stuff, and it just... There are angle limitations to the feature right now, but a standard like laptop webcam where you're meeting with someone, your eye contact's gonna be in the right space, and then when you have monitors where they should be, or single monitors or whatever, most people are gonna be fine. But if you have some crazy like off angle camera or something like that, it's gonna struggle. NVIDIA Broadcast version 1.4 has now released, bringing some new features, some pretty cool stuff that I just wanted to quickly go over here. There's honestly not much to talk about. Uh, I have the Agato Facecam Pro added in here, and they have improved the background, background removal, black, background blur filters, all of that good stuff. I'm just cranking it up for the heck of it to look a little bit better, a little bit more pleasing. They also have a vignette effect that you can add, that if I turn off the eye contact, I can add that here. And they even add a face tracking component so that you don't get vignetted out, which helps make the background a little bit more pleasing how I'd like to do it. And you will notice for the most part, especially around my body, the subject isolation and even my hair, the subject isolation, especially with a big contrasty background like this, is significantly improved compared to previous versions. I've seen your all's complaints about it. Uh, we do still get a little bit over here. Like it's picking up a little bit of my background, but overall, especially they introduced an update that does temporal object detection so that it sees this, you know, something over time. So if something just pops up out of nowhere, it's less likely to not get blurred out and things that stick around that are clearly not your face continuously get blurred out here. But then they also added this vignette. They have a video noise removal beta, which most webcams these days don't need, but you got a strong and a weak option for that helps just reduce grain and video or no noise in your video. And then of course there's the big eye contact beta which this is primarily designed for video conferencing, but you can use it here too as well. The goal here is to maintain eye contact or at least continue to have eye contact even when you're not looking at the screen so you can connect a little bit more or make the person on the other end of, a, of the call feel more connected to. However, given the fakeness of it, I'm not sure that it achieves that effect just yet. You will notice that it continues to like pulse between where my eyes actually are and the eye contact and I don't know if that's intended yet, you know, I don't know if that is the expected effect that it switches back and forth, I guess just so you're not like death staring at the camera, but it is a constant back and forth that is a little jarring and repetitive, kind of feels like an NPC. And if you zoom in, you can see where the eyes making contact with the camera are lower resolution than the eyes in the video. And so you can see it like pop into place when the sharper eyelashes actually come through. It also, the noise removal and the eye contact betas also require you to drop your camera down to 30 FPS, even on 1080p 30 FPS, even on a beefy RTX 4090. Whereas most of the other features, including the background removal blur, allow you to run at a full 4K 60 FPS. So that part was a little disappointing, but not a huge deal. 
I think there are uses for this eye contact thing. I think for a lot of people to just make them uncomfortable and it needs a little bit of work, but I think, especially th this is intended for video calls where your video is gonna be squished and compressed anyway, so that difference in the sharpness of eyelashes is not gonna be noticeable at all. And I think the same for smaller face cam Twitch streams. I think it'll do a lot better to help kind of keep connected, but I would like to see some control over how often it pulses, size of the eyes and things like that, because the constant looking back and forth is not necessarily it, 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 it's grating for how quickly it goes back and forth, but these are awesome features I am so stoked for the direction that this kind of stuff is headed in and I just wanted to show it If you haven't downloaded the update go ahead and download it play with it It's it obviously requires Nvidia 20 series or higher graphics cards But Nvidia is putting so much dev time into streaming features that I am so stoked to see where these features go in the future There is still They teased some like face tracked effects way back when they originally released broadcasts, like you could do like a Super Saiyan aura or a hat or something. And given that snap camera just shut down and a lot of the other options for these features either use up a ton of CPU to track your face or just don't work very well, given how well this tracks you and masks you out and things like that, I would love to start see seeing some more of those other features. So links to download will be in the description below. You've got to continue watching to this video to see which webcam you should use for your stream because it makes a bit of a difference and you, you don't need to run this heavy background blur filter if maybe you get one of the new fancy webcams that just came out. Remember to be kind, rewind.